What's going on, Chemical Guys family? Thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Detail Garage. Henry and I have this massive truck in the shop and we've already gone through the steps of washing it and now we're going on to the decontamination and also paint correction stages. And as you see, this is a big black vehicle, which means that it's going to show all kinds of imperfections and this car goes off-road, obviously. Yeah. So it's got a lot of that trail, pinstripes and off-roading kind of mess. So we need to start by claying it and then we're gonna move on to the polishing steps to revive that deep black luster. So I had to bring on Nick to help me out because the owner, first off, he's big, scary, scary looking, and I'm kind of small, his truck's huge, and he's picking it up today. So we need to make sure we decontaminate, we polish it, and we ceramic coat it by the end of the day today. So today we're gonna start off by claying it with our medium duty clay bar. Nick, what is a clay bar? So a clay bar is a sticky, consistent patty or putty material. And what this does is it extracts all kinds of foreign contaminants and anything else that lands in the pores of the paint because we've all seen it, those tiny little specks in the paint or it feels really rough. This is what's going to remove it, but think of this as just a tool. So this isn't something you need to use at every car wash, but it's something you definitely want to do before you do any kind of paint correction, or if you're going to apply any kind of glaze, sealant wax, or even ceramic coating, because you don't want to lock that kind of junk in there. So what happens if I forget to clay bar and I go straight to apply a ceramic or a glaze or even a wax? What happens to my paint? Great question, Henry. Thank you. So by skipping over the clay bar step and just moving on to putting on your coatings, you're actually making it really difficult for a long lasting bond. And you're also locking in that kind of junk. So it's not gonna look that great. It's also gonna make it really hard to remove it later on. Can it scratch? It can scratch potentially. Uh, it really scratches badly if you move on to the polishing step without claying because it clots your pad and it starts marring the finish. So in other hands, mandatory to clay. Exactly. Thank you. So now that Nick clarified all my questions that you guys ask in the comment sections or even our social media, he clarified them. Now it's time to actually do it, Nick. So we're gonna be walking over to the Raptor. I brought some towels so Nick and I can use while we're wiping down the Raptor. But whenever you're using a clay bar, you always have to have a clay lubricant. So we're gonna have clay lubricant in our secondary sprayer bottle. You'll spray down the area you're working on. And don't be stingy with it. Make sure you're very, very generous because a clay bar that is dry can potentially cause marring you spray your clay bar and you just glide it over. And when you're gliding it over, you can hear the contaminations being lifted off from the paint and it's going inside the clay bar. So just rub it side to side, never go in circles because if you do go in circles, you can scratch. So after a pass, you'll inspect your clay bar and you can see all the contaminations that are around the clay bar. It's going inside the clay bar and once you are done with one area, thank you, Nick, you'll flip it over to a clean side remold it and get a clean side and follow the same process. Once you give it a pass, you wipe it down with a soft microfiber towel. And if you feel it now, it's smooth as glass. Now, quick side note, if you're wondering why we chose the medium is because uh, although this is a newer vehicle, it never gets washed. Henry forgot to mention that the owner really doesn't believe in washing, which is terrible for a black paint job, but that means all the contaminants over the years have started to stick to the surface. And then over your detailing experience, or as you start to you know, get more skills, you kind of start to learn which one's going to work best. And for something like this, a light's not gonna do the job. An OG may have done it, but we're gonna be sure to remove all kinds of the impurities by using a medium clay bar. Now also, whenever you're using brand new microfiber towels, you wanna to make sure that you remove the tag just because this could potentially scratch the paintwork. So this is just another precaution, but we're using new microfiber towels because we don't wanna induce any new scratches or swirls. So now guys, it is time for Nick and myself to clay bar the whole entire Raptor. We have our work cut out for us today. We'll see you guys once we're done. Alrighty guys, so we just got done with the decontamination stage using that medium clay bar. And Henry can tell you that by using the medium clay bar, it extracted any of the impurities that were in the pores of the paint, giving that super slick finish. And now we're ready to move on to the paint correction stage using V36 with our Orange Hex Logic Pad. And our machine of choice today is the... Torque 15 DA. Because? Because it has a 50 millimeter throw. We're going with 50 millimeter throw because it has flat areas, it's not so curvy. Whenever we get to the front end, such as the hood on this Ford Raptor, we're gonna switch over machines to a Torque 10FX using a three inch backing plate. That's right. So the combination of using the orange text logic pad with V36 
is going to diminish and refine those scratches and swirls and any kind of impurities or stains that are on the exterior of the vehicle. And it's going to revive that deep lustrous shine because what we're trying to do is not 100% correction, but we're going for at least removing 85% of those scratches and swirls so we can revive that deep black finish. You know what's sad, Nick? Hmm. It's a 2018. Is it? It's a 2018 and the paint is bad. I'll believe it. Even brand new cars off the lot will come with a lot of scratches and swirls, but this car has been uh, severely neglected and also abused, so it's got a, a lot of work ahead of us. All right, so you get this side, I get that side, I'll meet you in the middle. So what we're going to do is start by applying five dime-sized dots to our hex logic pads, which is about the size of one hex. You obviously want to shake the bottle up first, and this will mix all the chemicals together. And again, five dime-sized dots for about every two foot by two foot section. A lot of guys ask how often do you need to reapply product or how much product to use. Basically every two foot by two foot section which is a little bit bigger than your stance or your shoulder width and that's going to give you a proper amount of breakdown time as well as enough product so that you refine a section at a time and this way you're not you know creating marring or holograms but again you want to keep the machine completely flat and also to prevent any kind of marring or excess heat we're going to be using our pad conditioner. And we'll go over to the vehicle and then just dab it out on the lowest speed setting we're going to spread it out in that two foot by two foot section and on the highest speed setting which is going to be speed setting six or 5500 on your torque machines that's how we're going to actually break down the polish and refine those scratches and swirls so just how nick said apply five dime sized drops to your pad apply some pad conditioner and then you can go with a two by two area when you're working on. I'm skipping the hood right now because we said we're gonna be using a Torx 10FX with a smaller bagging plate on there. So we're gonna work all around that we're gonna tackle this hood. This hood is neglected and we're gonna leave that the best correction for last. So blotch it out. And on speed setting one, we will spread out the product. So turn on the machine, turn it on. The cool thing about the torque machines is if you turn it off after you're done using it, it actually resets. So you never forget what speed setting you're on. For example, you walk away and you come back and you're on speed setting six and you're not supposed to use speed setting six, you have more chance of damaging your paint. But Torque Tool Company has that safety feature. So if you, if you forget what speed setting you're on, it will automatically reset for you. So now it just completely spread out. I'll bump it up to speed setting six or 5,500 and work it into turns clear or translucent. So guys, I'm polishing out this Ford Raptor, but you gotta keep in mind, your pad is going to be getting caked up with product. So over time, you use less product so it won't cake up on you. So right now, I'm only applying three dime size drops because I already have suspended product in my orange Hexlogic pad. So apply less as you go, because keep in mind, there's product already in your pad. Let's get back, let's get back to it. All right guys, this Raptor is huge. So we brought on more hands to help us out. The minute the scratches and swirls on this paint, we brought up Eric. What's up guys? There he is. <laughs> He's gonna be using the Torx 15DA. I'm already using the Torx 10FX to get this hood because it's curvy and has more intricate details. While wow, he's gonna help me out getting the door panels, the bedside, and much more. All right guys, so this is Eric. He's from Detail Garage Los Angeles. If you want to stop by, say hello to him at Detail Garage Los Angeles. Let's get back to polishing. All 
Alrighty guys, so Henry and I just finished polishing up this beautiful Raptor and as you can see we've got a lot of that lustrous shine returned. We've removed a lot of those scratches and swirls but again we're not going for 100% correction because this car it's going to be going back off road and we know it's going to get scratched again but we definitely want to revive some of that gloss by removing some of those scratches and swirls. But now we want to protect it using Hydra Slick which is going to lock in that shine and also repel any kind of harsh elements such as water spots, any kind of UV rays and it's also going to enhance that gloss. So Henry's going to start applying that by hand. We're going to do it to all the gloss surfaces, including the glass and the headlights. But in the meantime, you guys can check out these products on our website, chemicalguys.com or your local detail garage. If you guys like today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop some love for the Raptor, and we'll see you guys next time right here in the detail garage.